Okay, so this next problem is actually a little bit more involved. Uh, very, very uh, interesting one to think about. It's a 60 kilogram person uh, jumps up to a height of 0.32 meters. So uh, let's say the mass here, let's begin by saying the mass is 60 kilos. And this person le leaps up to a height of uh, 0 0.32 meters. And then, obviously, so let's just draw kind of like a uh, up and down. That's what the person does. Question is, with what momentum does the person reach the ground? So basically, in order to deal with this situation, you can just assume that at the top, obviously, their velocity is going to be zero because that's their maximum height, and so they're going to fall. So in order to do this, we could, say, use a kinematics equation and say, all right, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta d. And our initial velocity would be zero in this case at the top, and they're going to fall a distance of 0.32. Let's find the final velocity. So that's just going to be 2 times 9.8 uh, meters per second squared and a distance of 0 0.32 meters. And of course, since we want to find V, not VF squared, we'll have to do that. Now we'll get our trusty RPN calculator. And we'll go 2 enter 9.8 times 0 0.32 times square root. And we're getting 2.5 meters per second. So that's how fast they're reaching the round. This isn't a very, you know, it's, it's a third of a meter. Nonetheless, there's our answer. N so the next part says, well, we ha still haven't really answered the question, which is, uh, what momentum does what with what momentum does the person reach the ground? So their momentum is going to be mv, and hence we just have to multiply the that by 60, and we're going to get 150. Okay, so 60 kilos times 2.5 meters per second is going to give us 150 approximately, you know, 0.3 uh, kilogram meters per second. Now, therefore, if we ask ourselves how much impulse is going to be needed to stop this person, how much is their momentum going to change by? Well, obviously, if that is their momentum uh, downwards, the change in their momentum must be equal to that much negative, okay, in order for their final velocity to come to a stop. Now, next part of the question says, if the person uh, lands with their uh, the person lands with their knees bent and their their stopping time is 0 0.05 seconds what's the average force uh, that this person's body experiences so what they've given us now is they've given us the time required to stop is 0 0.05 seconds now that's not a lot of time. That's a very small amount of time. So they're changing their momentum of by 150 newton seconds in only 0 0.05 seconds. Therefore, what is the force? Remember the equation f for our momentum equation is F net delta T. Hence, the net force is going to equal delta P over delta T. And so, therefore, it's simply uh, 150 
newton seconds over a time of 0 0.05 seconds and that's going to give us 3,005 or just over 3,000 newtons of force. Okay? Now, th yeah, that's quite a lot, by the way. That's quite a lot because, I mean, the, the person weighs, their weight would be uh, mg. And so if they're 60 kilos, you know, g is approximately 10. So their weight is going to be approximately uh, 600 uh, newtons, 60 times 10. But they're actually experiencing a force of 3,000. Now, that's like five times their weight. So that's a lot. And the reason why it's so, so humongous is because that time is so small. That's 0 0.05 seconds is almost nothing. So if you were to, if you were to, s to stop yourself, if, if the person were to, to jump and stop themselves in a longer period of time, it would be far less force required to stop them because it would be acting over a longer period of time. Well, hope you enjoyed that problem. See you next time.